Welcome back to my channel. My name is Sean Campbell and today I'm going to show you how to implement the prototype design pattern in Java. The prototype design pattern is a creational design pattern that specifies the kind of objects to create using a prototypical instance and creates new objects by copying this prototype. In simpler terms, the prototype pattern is like making photocopies of something. Instead of creating a new object from scratch every time, you can just copy an existing one and make some adjustments if needed. This is useful when creating new objects that are complicated to construct or that take a lot of time to create. Okay, so let's have a look at the UML class diagram of the prototype design pattern. Here we have a prototype interface that provides a clone method that allows client code to make a clone of a given concrete prototype. In this case, it'll either be concrete prototype one or concrete prototype two. And you'll see that each of these concrete prototypes implement the clone method. And when they are invoked, it'll return a copy of itself. Now, as mentioned, the prototype pattern is particularly useful when an object takes very long to construct or when it's extremely resource intensive to create a specific object. In other words, the first time that you construct the object or concrete prototype, you'll have to do it the normal way using the new keyword. But the next time you want to use it and you might want to make minor modifications, then you can simply go ahead and clone or copy that object and then make the desired adjustments. And this will be a much faster and convenient process. Now let's go ahead and look at our particular use case and then it will make more sense. Now our use case will be based on a person that can either be a teacher that teaches a given course or it can be a student that has a particular teacher that teaches a particular course. But more specifically, when we focus in on the prototype design pattern, the person class is an abstract class that takes on the role of the abstract prototype. Now you might say, I said that the abstract prototype was an interface, but it can be either an interface or an abstract class. And then it defines the clone method that allows the client code to clone a teacher or a student object. And then the teacher implements the clone method. And when it is invoked, it'll return a copy of itself and the student also implements the clone method. And when it is invoked, it'll return a copy of itself too. Now you might say that you said it's useful when you construct an object that takes a very long time to build or when it is very resource intensive to construct an object. Now, first of all, it goes without saying that a person like you and I is quite complex. So if we had to create an object that contains all the attributes of a real human being, it would be entirely complex. But as mentioned before, I like to use very simple examples so that the focus is on the design pattern itself, in this case, the prototype design pattern, and not on some fancy implementation that might distract you from completely understanding how the pattern works. So now you've seen the class diagram. Next up, we are going to write the code. And if it hasn't made sense from the class diagram perspective, I'm certain it's going to make sense when you actually code the prototype pattern. It is now time to code the prototype pattern. Let's start by creating our prototype or abstract prototype. So go ahead and create a new class and call it person. Now we are going to use an abstract class as our prototype or abstract prototype. So go ahead and mark it as an abstract class. And then I'm going to add a note here and say this is our prototype. OK, now, importantly, if you want to make a clone of an object in Java, you need to implement the clonable interface. And I'll show you what I mean just now. So let's say implements clonable. And then if we navigate to the definition, you'll see that the interface in fact doesn't provide a method for cloning. And 
that might be strange for you but you'll see that the clone method actually resides on the object class and as you might know that each and every java object actually extends the object class so let's read what it says here a class implements the clonable interface to indicate to the object or clone method that it is legal for that method to make a field for field copy of instances of that class so importantly you can invoke the clone method on the object class but it'll throw an exception if you didn't actually implement the clonable interface so that's why we implement the clonable interface and then let's go ahead and override the clone method so we'll say override and then public person it will return the prototype itself as you can recall from the class diagram and we'll call it clone that's the method we're overriding and then we can say return super dot clone but super dot clone returns an object as you can see there and it also throws a clone not supported exception so we'll have to handle that and let's just go ahead and cast it to the person our abstract prototype and i'm going to go ahead and add a try catch and i'm going to keep it simple and simply say e dot print stack trace if that happens and then we'll return a null if there was an exception okay now we don't just want the person class to have the clone method but one of the reasons that I opted for the abstract class is to share a field between the two concrete prototype classes. So, and that is a name field. So let's say a person has a name, regardless of whether the person is a teacher or a student. And then I'm going to add a protected constructor and it will simply take in a single argument, the name this dot name equals name and I'm also going to generate a getter and setter okay and that's all we have to do for our prototype class next let's create our concrete prototype so go ahead and create a new class and call it teacher the first thing that you need to do is to extend the person class our abstract prototype and then let's go ahead and create a constructor matching the super so we'll pass the name to the super and let's go ahead and add another field we'll say that a teacher also teaches a course so add a private final string field because we'll only need a getter here we don't have to set it after the initial construction and pass in another argument string course that'll be the name of the course that the teacher is teaching so this dot course equals course okay and then we don't have to override the clone method because it's already implemented on the base or on our abstract prototype and you'll see that we'll do it later on the student class and just a hint for now the super.clone method only does a shallow copy and you'll see what problems that actually creates a little later when we debug through the code but for now the teacher object our concrete prototype one has been completed so let's create our concrete prototype two and that'll be the student class Let's mark it as such, concrete prototype two. Again, extend the person class, our prototype. Create a constructor matching the super. So this time we want to say that a student has a teacher that teaches a given course. So add a field for the teacher and let's say teacher 
as an argument there. And let's set the teacher field there. Now, importantly, there's no particular reason why I'm adding concrete prototype one in here. The only reason I'm doing this is to illustrate what the problem with the shallow copy is because a shallow copy only copies primitive types and not reference types and the teacher object is obviously a reference type okay and then i'm going to go ahead and add the getters and setters for the teacher field okay so for now the concrete prototype 2 has been completed next up we'll write the client code so go to the main java class and then let's clone the teacher object first so i'm just going to add a comment here and say clone teacher then let's say teacher call it teacher equals new teacher let's say the teacher's name is sean and sean is teaching a course creational design patterns in Java I'm just going to make some space here okay so like I said with the prototype pattern you'll always have to instantiate the object one time and then the next time you instantiate it you can actually skip instantiation and simply clone it and that's what we're going to do so we'll say teacher call it teacher clone We'll say equals teacher dot clone. Okay, go ahead and cast it to the teacher, the concrete prototype one, because clone returns the abstract prototype, our person class. And then we can go ahead and print something out and say message format dot format. And I'm going to say teacher was cloned we'll add the zero there so I'm going to put a code on there as well and then say who teaches a certain course so let's go ahead and add those arguments so we'll say teacher clone dot get name and the second argument there, teacher dot get course. It seems like I forgot to add a getter for the course. So go to the teacher object. Let's say generate getter. Okay. Teacher dot get course. Right. So that is the clone of the teacher we're not going to change anything just yet and then let's say clone student student again we need to instantiate it the very first time and let's assume that the teacher and student objects are very time consuming to construct and we'll say we've got a student called James and James has a certain teacher and we are going to pass the teacher clone in there. Then let's go ahead and make a copy of James. We'll say student and call it student clone equals student dot clone. And again, we'll have to cast it to student. Okay. And similarly, let's print something out. Again, use the message format class. Dot format. And we can say something like student was cloned. James, that is enrolled in Sean's course. Okay, and we'll need to pass in the arguments. We'll say student clone dot get name, comma, student clone dot get teacher dot get name. Okay, 
And before we change the prototype, because that's obviously what we want to do here, because that's why we have the prototype pattern in the first place, is to clone an already instantiated object and make some minor modifications to it. But before we go there, let's run this code and see what it gives us. So here it says, teacher was cloned, Sean who teaches creational design patterns in Java. Student was cloned, James that is enrolled in Sean's course. I just need to go ahead and add another single quote there. And for what it's worth, I'll run it again. And there you can see that it's fixed there. So now let's go ahead and change a field on the clone and we'll do it on the teacher clone and you'll see exactly why I'm specifically doing it on the teacher. So let's say change teacher name. We'll say teacher clone dot set name and we'll change the teacher's name from Sean to John. Okay. And then let's go ahead and print out the student clone information again. So do you agree with me since we pass the student cloned object to the student up there and we're only changing the teacher clone after we've instantiated or cloned the student clone that it should still say student was cloned James that is enrolled in Sean's course. But let's see if that actually happens or not. So let's run it again. Now here, surprisingly, it says student was cloned James that is enrolled in John's course. Now, the reason for that is because the default clone method on the object class does a shallow copy. In other words, it does a field by field copy, but not for reference types. And if you go to the student object, the teacher field is actually a reference type and not a primitive. So how can we solve this problem? And the answer is by overriding the clone method and then converting it into a deep copy rather than doing a shallow copy. So let's go ahead and do that. Let's override the clone method. Public. This time it will return student. And then we can say clone. And then let's get the student copy from that shallow copy first call it student clone equals super dot clone this time we'll cast it to student and then the next step is to manually instantiate the teacher field so we'll say dot set teacher and then we'll say new teacher and then we'll pass in student clone dot get teacher dot get name comma student clone dot get teacher dot get course in other words it's as simple as that to do a deep copy we simply need to manually instantiate all the reference types on our object and then we can go ahead and return the student clone now if we go back to our client code and run it this time you'll see that it actually says James that is enrolled in Sean's course because at the time when we changed the teacher clone object, the student and the student clone was already instantiated or copied in this case. But since it was a shallow copy, the reference was shared between the original teacher clone object and the student clone object. But now since we are doing a deep copy, it actually creates a brand new copy or instance of the teacher field and therefore it still says Sean and not John. Now in some cases you might actually prefer the shadow copy and then if you want to have a shallow copy again you can simply remove this code where we are overriding the clone method. So that's it you now know how to implement the prototype pattern you know how to do a shallow copy and you also know how to do a deep copy. If you enjoyed this video, please go ahead and like it and subscribe to our channel. Till next time.